Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines The British Challenge with me, Pug Gaming. So if you're a follower of the Pug Gaming social media content, you'll know that the winning project was the British Seaside Town. Now I must admit I am really thrilled and excited to start this project and what we're going to do, I know it's stated as the British uh, Seaside Town but we're going to start with a British seaside pier, something that all holiday destinations in the UK tend to have, and I've got a few ideas on what we can, well, on a way that we can create a very different pier than what you've seen already. So you may see here below what I'm creating is the standard um, key-based um, pier, and in my eyes, yes, it looks good, but it doesn't resemble what I like to see in terms of a sort of standard pier. A standard pier should be something which is standard on some legs, not like this. This isn't quite what I want to achieve in this project. So I've got an idea. Now the issue is that we don't have anything on the workshop yet that can resemble a proper pier like construction. So instead I found these. So these are the sunken walls from the workshop and as you can see on this one in particular, the double sort of pathed version, we have three pillars on each of the assets. So in my eyes what I'm thinking is we're going to use this in a, in a long line to pretty much replicate the sort of legs I guess on a pier. So that's my plan and let's see how that gets on as we jump into a quick time lapse. Now I'm going to quickly jump in here because this is where the magic happens and what you need is you have to firstly ensure you've got the move it mod added because this is how we're going to create the sort of top tier of the seaside pier. So when I say top tier I mean we're going to have a thin channel all the way up which will just be pretty much a walkway and then this bit at the top end is going to be the area where in this well in my case I'm gonna have a ferris wheel and some sort of food areas so this is the area you walk to at the end of the pier where activity actually happens this is where you are he heading towards so as you can see it did take a lot of time here a lot of effort a lot of pain as well I must say to get these all lined up perfectly getting the levels correct as well because each time you lay down the road or move something you sometimes have to use the move it tool just to bring the alignment up a little bit so yes you need to have a bit of time and dedication to create this but the final results I'm hoping will be absolutely incredible. So this next stage was the do or die moment this is where we now have to remove all of the foundations to reveal what we've just created so this is the moment of truth. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, we've got to be careful to bring this down. As you can see, there is a layer where you create, um, well, where you're basically building. There has to be some sort of block creation below it to sort of hold it all together. So I've got an idea on how we can hide that later. But for now, let's just see how this ends up looking. So just get these sides 
done. So it's a good way of learning to get used to terraforming a bit better as well, which is something that I certainly would like to improve a little bit more on. So let's get these bits out of the way. We'll level all this up later so it actually goes up gradually like a beach. But for the time being, let's just get this out of the way so we can see what we're left with. And I think this little corner here, and we are pretty much ready to press that button. Okay. That looks good to me. Let's have a look what it looks like. Look at that. Now that looks much more like a pier. It's the only thing I'm not too happy about is these little corners here. Um, but I think what we can probably do is move some of these um, bits around and try and cover that up. But we'll have to see how that goes a bit later on. For now, let's try and see if we can build on this as well. So I want to put the Ferris wheel in this middle gap here along with some sort of food bits as well but first let's cover up with the concrete these grass bits as well just to make it all look a little bit cleaner so the only thing about this pier is the fact we've got these grass hedges you wouldn't tend to see those on a pier but we're working with what we've got so I think this is the best that we have available and look at that perfect so the ferris wheel fits on perfectly no issues with that at all which also means that we'll be able to place some of the uh, food kiosks as they call them on the workshop excellent okay so let's find the right one it will be this one the rico version and we'll prop that just in the middle here and that is looking a lot more like a British style pier. Excellent, extremely happy with that. That has worked wonders. And if you compare the two, it's a no brainer that this one is the better option. So as you can see, we've deleted the old key version and we are now on to the next step of detailing our British pier. One thing I didn't catch on camera as well is we have covered over the side um, little um, foundations as well. So if we zoom in a little bit here, you can now see that we've covered those gaps up that were showing through the water and we've now got a more, a more appealing look. So what we need to do is cover up the sides with some walls to make it a bit more safe and get on with some detailing. So we're gonna jump into a time lapse and we'll catch up again shortly.
Okay, so as you can see through the time lapse, we created a few um, props around, we added a few um, bits around, a bit more detailing, and we also leveled up the pier itself. I did notice that there was a bit of a droop in the pier in terms of the length at one end towards the um, sea line and also towards the actual land itself. So we've sorted those out and we do have now a more aligned um, pier. It does go a little bit up towards this end here, towards the actual mainland, but there's not too much we can do about that. So what I'm doing here is just adding some rocks in here just to create a bit more of an ambience of this area. Um, you tend to see that where the pier is itself onto the beach, there's no access to get underneath it or there's something in the way normally um, to obviously allow the, um, the beach to be maintained a bit better. So my plans further forward of this project, as I say, the main part of this project is to do a, um, a British seaside theme. So we're going to have a lot of hotels around, we're going to have a lot of restaurants, we're going to have the Brighton themed houses. This is actually going to be based upon um, Brighton um, seaside itself. It's not going to be exact like for like because we don't have the space. Um, but I'm going to use that as the inspiration here and try and create what I consider to be a British um, seaside area. So the next episode we'll do a bit more of the foundations and the layout of the roads. Um, not so much detailing I don't think next week but um, I do always say that and end up spending most of the time doing details so maybe I shouldn't say that in future but anyway the um, next episode we're going to just carry on and do a bit more um, on this area here. We're going to carry on the um, key bits as well around the outside of the road, get those all leveled up. I might do a bit of that off camera just to save a bit of time. But the only issue I think we're going to find with this um, project is the lack of sort of British themed um, hotels and, and restaurants on the workshop. There's not that many at all. I'm going to have to dive into some other um, props and assets which don't quite fit the theme but they fit the location so some of the hotels we use may be a bit overkill we may have to use some apartments to replicate um, some hotels but this is the life of city skylines you have to use your imagination you have to use assets in ways that they weren't actually designed for and the surrounding areas is what makes it the well what makes it comes alive um, for example this pier in general this asset that I'm using isn't meant to be used for a pier but imagination has helped that out and as you can see here now we're just covering up the dirty white um, foundations that have to be put there um, just to make things look a little bit more tidy and that certainly does make a lot of difference there we can still see this white line across here, but I'm not too sure if we can do much with that. We could raise, and I think what we will do actually, we'll raise up the, um, yeah, because the stones don't quite work there. So we'll raise that up a bit later on, um, the actual land line again, just to make it look a bit more tidy. And that will pretty, pretty much be it for today's episode. But one thing I'd like to ask you guys is pretty much what would you like to see in the seaside town? I've obviously got a lot of ideas already, that things that I want to put in there, but inspiration from you guys is always going to make things better. So your interpretations of items that will be useful or widely seen in a uh, British seaside town would be much appreciated. Anything you can throw at me, let me know, and we can certainly work together to create another great project. And also guys, don't forget to follow me on YouTube and Twitter and not forgetting Twitch. I've been doing a lot of uh, Twitch um, streams recently, mostly on City Skylines where I'm doing things like this on, the, uh, on Twitch Live, but obviously recording at the same time for these videos. But I've also been playing a few other games, been playing a bit of Battlefield and also a um, strategy game called Cossacks Free. So... Um, if you haven't already, give me a follow on Twitch and I'll be more than happy to speak and communicate to you guys. And we'll now end this episode. Again, as always, thank you very much for watching 
and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Comments will be hugely welcomed and until then, have a good weekend and I'll catch you soon. All the best.